I woke up this morning and came out in the shop. I haven't really been here in, uh, well, a couple of weeks. I was thinking to myself, what could I do today that would be fun? And, you know, the channel really is about sharing the hobby. This is all 254 parts. And it dawned on me, well, maybe I better go back to my roots. You know, go back to what really got me into working on chainsaws from the get-go. That was taking older saws like this. At the time it was home lights and old Husqvarna's. And see if I can make something that really is scrap run. Just simple as that. Just make them run. That one's pretty stuck. So I've got one here that actually turns over. This one. I've got a couple of cylinders. This one has, it looks nice inside. Got a busted fin that I kind of can touch up with a die grinder already started. So I'm going to use, I think, this cylinder. Ah, look at that, I got a muffler. Got a muffler, two mufflers. I think I'm going to use this one. This one here is too nice. Piston. Oh, look at that. I'm going to use that one. But I'm afraid what I'm going to do is uh, drop the cylinder then. So I think the lathe is going to get a little work. See how this works? Handle. You know, I got 372 stuff. What do I got for bearings? That's 562. 372. Got these. So, do I have enough to pull this off? What about gaskets? Do I have a gasket set for a 254? I do have a 254 set. Look at this. So, I guess if I want to to uh, change out a bottom end, that's not a problem. Even a little bit if I choose a split case, as I got plenty of materials to do that with. And uh, what else we have in here? Do I have carburetors? Those will work. So I do have a new carburetor if I need to. So where was I? Oh, I was rummaging through stuff to see if I can come up with enough parts to build a saw. And decided I wanted to use this piston. Got a finer ring for it. I'm going to take a piece of bar stock and turn it down into a arbor so I can turn the base of the cylinder of these cylinders because I want to see if I can snuggle that uh, top end down to get about 18 thousandths squish right about here on this piston relative to the cylinder and I think I have to take about 10 thousand off so I think I've come to a couple of conclusions one these cases have got a chip right there and therefore will never have any use to anyone so if I don't use them they're gonna get thrown away so I'm gonna use these so let me put them over here um, and obviously the bearings are shot so I'm going to change the bearings. This will be another pro This actually is a set of cases that are pretty good. You know, it's, it's the bearings are actually pretty good, but it's a later version. Uh, I'm going to put I'm going to put uh, seals in this one and do another saw another time. But this set of cases are going to get put in the side for now.
from nine minus nine to minus five. So that's like a four thousandths variance. So let me See how close I got. Let's see if I have an arbor. Yes, I do. Recording. When you take these things apart for the first time, you gotta pay attention to little details like this. This bearing carrier actually recesses into the cases just a little bit. So um, it goes like this. And that section right there goes down about 30 thousandths. And if you notice, that bearing is recessed in there about 30 thousandths. Remember that. So when you put the bearing back in, uh, you haven't put it in such that this doesn't get a chance to sit down and seal. Also, there's this O-ring that sits in there. I'm just going to 1194 the heck out of it and put a new seal. This was the goofy plastic thing that came out of there. It's supposed to be a seal. I don't see how that thing ever sealed. Okay, I'm right at 35. So you will give it a tap for good luck and call it good. There's one. Okay, the bearings are in, so you pop in these seals. All right, this is uh, one of those adapt and improvise moments. We really don't have the right the right puller, so I've got to come up with a series of things that'll work. Put a little oil in the bearings themselves. That's nah, a little more than I wanted. So I'm going to drop this right in there as far as it'll go. And I want to keep the uh, connecting rod up. But I'm going to pull that through with this concoction of stuff. Don't laugh. Again, making sure the connecting rod doesn't get jammed up on the case so I have it sticking up through where the cylinder would be. It's actually coming through pretty stiff. There it goes. Cinched up tight. Get it all cleaned up and get a case gasket on there and get the other side pu pulled together. I guess the next thing I need to do is make sure I have all the right screws.
have it, we have a crankcase. And this is really just to check squish now. This is not uh, a final assembly. I just want to see what I have. We're going to go back to that cylinder and trim the base in order to get to my 18,000 so I'm looking for for a squish. That's what this exercise is about. Anyway, I was saying, these 254s, one of the reasons I like them is they're just very, very rugged. They have the same bearings as a 372 with the uh, 6202 bearing. Same seals as the flywheel side of a 372. Clip side's different. And the wrist pin is a 12 millimeter wrist pin like a 372. So really the pieces that count are just about as rugged as a 372. And I like that. I mean, I like the concept of having the larger components and the ability to spin. You know, a 372 will run 13.5. When I'm done with this saw, it'll run 13.5 as well. Heel coil coming on this one. coil in there good. Twenty-five thousandths. The skin cut. I'm gonna get my eighteen. One way or the other. That's what I'm looking for. Well, since I'm digging into the junk pile, I found some wrist pin clips that come out of a saw or two. So I'll use those. Again, this is a pure junk saw. You know, nothing new, except for the seals and bearings. I found this ring. And I didn't see any sign of scoring on it. So, you know, I'll use a ring if it's uh, got a gap of less than 10 thousandths, but I'm not going to use a ring if it's more than that. That's kind of like 
desperation. And remember, there's a slight taper on these, so... 8 thousandths down here, 10 thousandths down here, and it's probably a little bit tighter up top. But let's see what we have in this ring. Okay, it's a nine won't quite get in there. Seven is there. So it's probably about eight thousand gaps. Split the difference. Eh, it'll work. So I got the top end on and noticed that there's some differences in the earlier uh, 254 versus the later 254s. There's the plastic seal holder in the later one. So that's different, but look at this. You see this plastic section right here? There's threaded holes for those screws and there's not in this case. So that's an update probably for better cooling or something but this is definitely different than the oh I see what the difference is check it out this is the ones that started having the forced air into the intake box and these guys here did not I believe this is a 95 1995 and this is a 1988 so that's a fairly significant change from those model years. Aluminum versus plastic, no baffle, the baffle to direct the air into the intake, and this one has none of that stuff at all. Interesting. Oil pump is different. This is a brass gear which came off of this crank right here. I had to heat it up to slide it off. And this one has a plastic deal, so that's all different as well. That's it. Slip right down on there, just like I figured it would. Yeah, make sure that filter is on it before you drop that in there. This seals on the oil line, and there's a rubber. You know, it's just like the uh, MS. It's just like the MS660. You got a little deal right there. I guess I should probably put it on this side first. See that? Make sure you put this straight down. These ridges go in. And you'll see it doesn't quite go all the way down through. You got to put something on it and tap it in. That. And that's it.
Well, this is uh, this is about taking saws that are dead and bringing them back to life. And every once in a while, you've got to adapt and innovate. And that shroud right there, they're no longer available, especially for the ones that don't have the air horn that goes up into the air box. So I want to see if I can use a little bit of epoxy and come up with a solution. Maybe ugly, but maybe it'll hold it together for for its next adventure. You know, it will be ugly, but if it works, you know. So let's just use that one there to tie it together. Okay, so I need to tap this with a hammer, form it a little bit. So I spent a little time with some pliers and took an old uh, guide plate and tweaked on it a little bit. Then a little more. So, you know, it lays pretty close. It doesn't have to be perfect. It really doesn't. And what I got to do now is get some brass on it. Yeah, that's pretty good. Let me get a little more wire wheel time on this first. That's about it for that. Let me go do some prep work. Now let's see where we are. Got that pretty well sealed up. Ugly but sealed. Started a hole there. I'm going to have to take a die grinder and punch that out and open it. But I sealed the whole muffler up with brass. And I covered up the hole with a piece of uh, sheet steel that I sort of tapped down around the edges and then put a lot of brass on there. And on this piece here, we put some structure here so I can backfill in here with epoxy and maybe have a part that'll last a little while. Now, on the tube, you know, I like to not get too crazy with it, but I want about an inch and a half. And one of the things you have to do, because, you know, I pretty much Again, scrap pile. I get uh, tubing from wherever I can. This had a galvanizing on it, so I had to put a fair amount of time to get rid of the galvanizing before I cut it off. And this is just basic skills. You know, nothing really special about this. That's how I do it. You know, use a die grinder, a little bit of finesse to, by eye, get it pretty close to where I want. I want a little bit out and a little bit up. Then I'll tap it to where I want it in the muffler. And this saw here will not be legal for 
New York State forests and the like, so it's definitely got a limited audience. Let's get some brass on that pretty darn quick. You know, I think I'm going to not paint this muffler. Call it Mini Me, Mini Cyclops. You know? Ugly, but it's not going to run any better painted. down it's gonna have it's like silver paint or gold paint I'm gonna run this all over the place this is not gonna get painted run that right down a little further I leave all that brass all over it and <laughs> Cyclops do now that's what we got that muffler is sealed up that is closed off sealed up the seam, pipe is in there, let me cool it off and then I'll uh, wire wheel it, um, wire brush it some. I'm going to take a file and flatten that out a little bit before I get the die grinder to it and then I'll put it on the saw. I'm leaving it brass, I'm not going to put paint on this. Art form. One of the things I like to do is uh, take a file And work the face here a little bit. And just because of the way I work the file, there's going to be a little bit of a curvature, which will also help favor the, the gasket. Give it a better chance. Alright, let's see what we got here. That's flattened. Kind of compulsive about putting things away. Pretty hard. That's good. Yeah, I think I'm gonna leave it just like that. Get the air to it and clean it out and leave all that brass right on there. Put it right on the on the motor and that along with this busted fin and busted case. cover on for my 257 make sure it clears look at that beautifully for that matter I think that cover is going to go with us for a while and same with, same with the bar and chain well let that dry and maybe this darn thing will survive I'll probably die grind off some of that I think that's going to be it for me for tonight.